Art students, Brian Proctor back with another video, or should I say a lesson, because this one's going to be an important class. Now, I know there's a lot of you out there that are doing comic books. Well, basically, majority of you probably doing comic books. And um, the only thing that you're thinking about is getting it drawn, getting it done. But you're not really thinking about what happens after I get my book done. How do I advertise? How do I publish? Uh, what are some of the other things I need to do when I get the drawings finished? So I'm going to talk about all of that stuff so that you have a well-rounded understanding of what it takes to make a comic book, uh, what it takes to get money from a comic book, what it takes to get the comic book out. So uh, I'm going to tell you the steps that I took to get me to this point right now. I, I plan on continuing to rise up higher than I am now, but right now I'm here. So I'm going to let you know how I got here so you can get here and then go there too. And also, before I forget, this is the most important part, because I did hit my 10,000 mark uh, subscribers, I'm going to give away 10 free Trials of the Samurai Clown comic book. And this is where I hold them up, but I was just too stupid to put them in my lap. So let me get them and then I'll hold them up and then we'll do this whole thing again. Okay, let's try that again. And because I hit my 10,000 mark, I'm giving away 10 free Trials of the Samurai Clown comic books. Now, this is my comic book. This is my title that I've been doing for a while. So uh, in celebration of me hitting my 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away these for free. So I don't know how I'm going to choose. I'm probably just going to choose randomly and just give them away for free. So what we're going to do now is go over to the drawing table. and I'm going to tell you how I got started from beginning to now and then give you guys some pointers on you know what where wherever you are maybe it'll help you maybe it won't but you know it's going to be no drawing no no pretty showing stuff but um yeah let's just go on over here right now and show you and then we'll get back to these and how to get these at the end of the video so let's roll over here so recently a subscriber i hope you subscribe wrote me a letter and asked me how did I get started and what does it take to make a comic book? So this is why I'm doing this. So just to answer that question, we have to go way, way back to the year 1999. Yeah, I know that's way back. And uh, I was working at a job. I was working at a dental lab at that point. And uh, one of my coworkers, I found out like anime. So we were trying to talk about an anime show and it was Samurai Champloo. And I couldn't think about it, and I ended up saying Samurai Clown. And then the guy started laughing, and he was like, well, wouldn't that be funny to see a, a clown run around with a samurai sword? So after I went back to my desk, I started thinking. I said, no, that wouldn't be really funny. That would be kind of entertaining. So then I started running in my head, putting together the story of the trials of the Samurai Clown. So these were the actual first sketches that I did with this. And I'm not going to make this about the book I'm just going to tell you guys from the beginning to the end and as I said these were like the, the beginning sketches of the characters that um, I was doing for the for the book so I started thinking about it at my desk before I even came up with the, the idea I was like okay a clown with a samurai sword a clown with a samurai sword why would he have a samurai sword so I said, okay, it's a clown, clown. Maybe he can work for a circus. Maybe he was good with the sword, and that was his 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 little stick. You know, using a samurai sword, cutting stuff. People can throw fruit at him. This is long before ninja fruit stuff. So I started thinking about that, and I said, okay, if he's at a circus, you need more characters. You need characters. You need, uh, like, the lion tamers and the ringmaster and this and that and that. So I slowly started developing these characters. Now... To do that, you also had to have the bigger picture. Who are these guys? Is he the only one? So I was like, no, nope. I had to develop all these characters and each one of them had to have their own abilities. So these are the characters that I eventually came up with. Now, some of you people have seen this before, some of you have not. But each one of them, when you do your book, you're gonna have your main character. Then you're going to have to have your side characters, your villains, and so forth and so forth, so on. So you're going to have to have a story for each and every one of these guys. And it's like having a baby. You have a baby, you name that baby George. You know, you find out George is allergic to chocolate. George grows up to be six foot four. George likes cats. So the same thing applies to your characters. You have to 
develop each character and you you have to know what each character does because there's going to be somebody that asks you about this character or about the book and you have to be able to explain what they do and what they are so these were some posters that I was doing to basically show my characters to the world and we'll kind of get into that later but um, once you get your characters developed then you have your story then it's time to do your book so this is the last of the characters these are the ninja clowns and I guess I should introduce these characters you have the samurai clown well maybe it'd be easier for the first one as I said I don't want to make this about the book I want to make this about the information that you need to do your own book you have the samurai clown you have the knife thrower you have the ninja clowns and the ninja clowns are kind of like the foot soldiers that do all the dirty work you have the ringmaster who's in charge of everything you have the animal tamer the fortune teller the fire eater the acrobats which are triplets and the fat lady these are just the main characters there are other little side characters but these are the guys that you focus on in the circus and they are assassins I didn't know if I told you that or not they are all assassins he was recruited by the ringmaster because he saw his skills uh, one day and he recruited him to become an assassin he didn't say hey you come be an assassin he recruited him at the circus because when he was a young boy, his mother gave him a birthday party for his ninth birthday, and it had a clown. And the clown was just amazing with his acrobatics and his magic and so forth. So the rest of his life, he wanted to be a clown. He wanted to make people laugh and have fun the same way he did when he was young. And no, this is not a slash killer kind of gory type of uh, comic book. It's, it's about an assassin. Well, anyway, when they recruited him, he became the top assassin basically kind of worldwide the circus was known and feared by basically every underground mob family whatever that um that existed because they were just that good because the tactics they used they never failed when they went after somebody they always did it but he did one too many jobs one went wrong and then he saw himself as you know i'm what am i i wanted to be a clown to make people laugh and i'm killing people so he ran away from the circus this is why he has that ragtag hobo look because he just ran away and the number one rule of the circus because these guys are assassins and they know stuff that people will never know is once you join a circus you can never leave so he left and now these guys have to bring him back because when he left he took with him a secret that he didn't even know he took it so that secret can bring the circus down as well as the two top um, mobsters in the city so let's get on to more of how now I have to use a little footnotes here because there's a lot of stuff that I want to say and um, I have to be able to say it right pause All right, so this is one of the questions that the guy wrote and asked me how how did I get started okay so and how do you get started now you, you now you know that the backstory on how I created this guy so one of the things was like how would I get people to know and that is advertising and granted most of us don't have money to to advertise on the radio or TV but there is social media so one thing you can do is just Blast the social media with your characters. Just draw and draw and draw your characters. Put it out there. Let people know that, hey, I have a book. I have a book coming out. And this was um, when I first started, me and four, three other guys, we had a, a studio, a 4D studio, where we each had separate books. And I think that was our undoing because we did everything by ourselves. So we were working on one book each. Instead of collaborating and working on just one title, that I think that's what killed us. So that that is something for you guys to think about. If you have friends and uh, you all got to try to get separate books out, don't pick one good book that you think will sell, work on it. And then once you get that one done, work on the other one. And that's how you get a company going. We were young, so we didn't really 
No, we were out there trying to shoot it and do it for ourselves. So, again, as I say, just draw and advertise. This is the clown versus Panthro. I was a, um, what is that? The, um, Thundercats, big Thundercats fan. Panthro was my favorite. So I was like, hey, clown versus Panthro. That would get some attention, you know, from social media. Uh, the clown card, you know, he's got to have a card. The guy's got money. So, you know, gave him a little car. I just have to finish fixing it all up. And, uh, you know, he's not going to be in his little clown costume all the time. But this was just something I did just, just to get out there. And, of course, I didn't finish it. Another pinup. And it's just about getting it out. When people see enough of it, they'll say, hey, what is that? I saw that before. What is that? And that's just that's your free advertising for you. If you have Facebook or Twitter or whatever, just just keep going with it. You don't have to have your book out. Just tell people, hey, I'm, I've got a book coming out. And make sure you do have it coming out. Don't say, I have a, a book coming out and it's just an idea. Make sure your book is already started. Continue to tell people, oh, maybe like uh, three months from now or this particular day, we're shooting for it. Keep them uh, abreast of it. Show them some little pictures, some little clips of you drawing. That thing to get people interested. That's the same way if I... Uh, pass out candy on the street and people say, oh, that candy is delicious. Oh, it's delicious. I said, yeah, I have a candy store coming out. Two years later, the candy store is not out. That flavor is long gone and people have forgot about it and they went on to someplace else. So keep putting your thing out. Just have it with anybody, with Flash, the Hope, and then of course, the Samurai Clown. Just keep kicking stuff out to advertise and then people, as I said, they'll get hungry for it, but you kind of have to produce. And that was the bad thing about, um, the company that I had in the beginning. Now I'm doing this on my own. The other guys are, are, are one of them passed away. The other guys are doing their own thing, but I'm still pushing. So I just lost my train of thought for a second, but regardless, just keep putting out as much as you can, keep advertising, keep doing what you do. So and this was like a mini poster I did, and that's another idea you could do mini poster. There is um, a comic book, Kablam! This is the one that I use. I use a couple of them, but Kablam was like the mainstay, and I'll get into that later. They did little mini posters, and um, it was really cheap to, to print the poster. I've colored this and so forth, but yeah, that, that's another way to give it out. If you're going to the conventions, you can give stuff out, you know, or sell it like for a dollar, really cheap. And so another one, as I say, just push your character or characters, put them out there, make people hungry for them. Of course, the ringmaster. And and as I said, these are, are more, once you develop your characters, <clears throat> you can do the same for them. Put the posters out, put the little uh, descriptions out, a little bit about what they do, what they are, so forth and so on. So this is the um, strongman. Ninja clowns, of course, these are not finished. Let me, just, let me pull back, let me pull down a little bit. I don't wanna get up and pull, pull back. Uh, the acrobats, these are triplets. They're acrobats. And then some more characters. This is the fat lady. Uh, this is the, uh, what is it? The fortune teller who plays a m major part in the story. And this is, again, the acrobat, one of the acrobat girls. So, moving on. This is the first book. This is the first book I did. Now, when I put this book together, I had no idea what I was doing. I like comics. I looked at comics. I read comics. But I never had anybody to sit down and say, okay, this is what you do, this is what you do, this is what you do. It was just hit or miss for me. So I want to talk about the mistakes I did. Now, number one, your cover is the most important thing about your book. Because if you have a, this book, that book, this book, this book, that book, you have all these covers fighting against each other. And you can't open this from, from what you're looking at. You can't open this book and see what's inside of it. So the only thing that's going to sell you is the cover. So looking back on it, and this was done in 2000. This, is, this was done in 2000. And uh, truth be told, I'm on the fifth book. And that's the one that I'm giving. Now I'm on the sixth book. The fifth book is the one that I'm giving away. So that's 19 years. 19 years that I have been doing this and only on book six. Now, life gets in the way, and we'll get into that later, but I want to keep pushing. Life gets in the way. Just remember that. So this is my first book, and once I got it published, I was so happy and proud of it, but one person told me, I did have one person 
in the end, show me, because I went to a com convention and one of the elderly comic book people were like, number one, your title. You need to have a title that jumps out at you. My title was small and it was in the corner. And my other friend who worked with the company with me, his was even smaller. So nobody said, oh, your title has to jump out at you because that's the first thing they see, the picture and then the title, because they have to remember what it's called. For instance, this, Justice League. Now, you see how that title stands out? It just jumps out. You will automatically see that title and then remember it because it stands out versus my little dark title that's in the corner. So, you know, mistake number one. Mistake number two, looking back on it, I would say that because this is not a slash clown thing, I should not have put the blood and the, the samurai there because people would look at it like, oh, he's a killer clown, but he's not a killer clown. The thing was, he was chained to that circus. He was, and it, it all has meaning. He was chained to the circus performing where he didn't want to, where he was an assassin, he was taking blood and he didn't want to. And that is why I gave him the sad clown face because I worked on that face for a while to try to develop that where he basically, he permanently tattooed this, this um, face, this, this design to his face so that he would always remember no matter where he went to, no matter where he went, he would remember what he's done. So he's basically hiding in plain sight. The circus is after him and he can't hide because his face is tattooed that way and his hair is basically um, not glued, but what do you call that when you do your hair? Put the holes in your hair so that his hair is whole on super holes like that. So that's basically the Samurai Clown. Now, doing this again, also you have to think about one, and I have my little notes here. Are you doing this by yourself? Is it all you? Okay, so as I said, life gets in the way. If it's all you, how old are you? What's going on around you? Are you high school? Uh, are you... Um, going for a career? Are you starting your first job? So all these things will hinder you doing your book. Now I stuck with it because this was my goal in life. Now I went through two marriages and I don't know how many jobs, but the thing that got me and a guy asked me at my job now, and I still have a full-time job. I'm not able to quit and do this. So I'm not rich yet. I'm still striving, but I'm not there yet. And he asked me, because we have a lot of people arguing and fussing at my job now. And he's like, oh, how do you stay calm? How do you, how is it that you don't let people get to you? And I told him because I focus on one thing, my goal in life, and that's to create and to teach, to draw. So whenever people around me are fighting or nagging or whatever, and that happens in every job, I don't focus on them. I focus on when I get home, what I have to do to my book or my next issue or my next video or my next whatever. That's what keeps me going and that's what keeps me one, out of the street, out of trouble, the whole nine yards, because I have a goal in life, and that's this. So, number two, as I said, if you have people helping you, you have to ask yourself, how serious are they? Will they drop out maybe halfway between book issue or book three? Because I say, as I say, life gets in the way. So, if these guys have kids, for instance. You're married. You have kids. Your kids uh, demand your attention. Your wife might be saying, put that stupid comic book up and come take care of these kids. Or your job might be saying, oh, you have to do overtime. Or you might be studying for something else or you have to go out of town. So you have to, before you actually get that, that handshake down with that partner, you have to see that that person is as dedicated and determined as you are or your books will never get out there. And doing it by yourself, as I said, in 19 years, issue six, now I'm pushing them out now, I'm, I'm continually to pushing them out, but we'll talk about that later. What have I done other than books in 19 years? I'll, I'll, I'll show you that stuff later. But yes, the title of the book, or Runaway, this is the first book, he is a runaway, small and then black. Now at that point, I. I rarely knew anything, rarely. I really didn't know, know anything about Photoshop. I just knew to draw the book. I didn't know how to, to, to put it together. So fortunately, I did have a friend who would guide me along the way with Photoshop. But uh, things that I didn't know, I didn't have the, the story and I didn't have my name on, on the book. Uh, you know, the art story and art by Brian Proctor. I didn't have that. 
the guy who did lettering, and that's another thing. Lettering. Can you do lettering? Can what can you do by yourself? What can't you do? You're gonna need inker if you can't ink. You're gonna need a writer if you can't write. You're gonna need a colors if you can't color, and we'll get into that later. Fortunately, I did know, I did play around with Photoshop enough to be able to color this, and this is my first attempt at coloring anything, but I knew that I couldn't do background colors and so forth, so that was out of the question, but I didn't want a black and white cover, so I colored it the best I could, and I went on from there. Another thing about it, let's go on to the inside. All of this stuff down here, like the ownership and so forth and so on, the company name, I didn't know anything about that. You have to have that on the front of your cover. When was it produced? Who owns it? Who is it yours? Is it somebody else? The copyrights of this thing. All of that stuff you have to put down. And the best thing to do is get another book or take somebody's book. Take the whatever I did with that Justice League book. Take that book. Look inside of it and see how it's put together. How how did they how well they have a bunch of advertisements, but how did they put this stuff together in order to own this book? Where is it? I don't even know where they, they, they keep that stuff nowadays. They have so many advertisements in these books. It's just like ridiculous. And that's kind of one reason I stopped with the comic books because I started doing my own, shall I say, because it was like just full of advertisements. But anyway, back to this. Another thing is I did not have, I couldn't, I knew that I could not color this thing, but I didn't want to just black and white lines. So let me pull out a little bit more so you can see more of it. So what I did is I went with a gray scale. I took the gray markers and these were, I guess I should show you these markers. These were the Faber-Castell uh, shades of gray. Let's see if you can see that. It's kind of hard to hold that up there. And basically these are just darker shades. Each one is a little darker shade of gray and I made it a gray tone because I couldn't color. So, I mean, it was, it was, it was the, the next best thing and it's cheap. And basically, you're just shading. You're just adding a little shadow, you know, here and there to bring it out a little bit more. And as I said, I had no idea what I was doing. This was my first book. This was one of the pages. Another page. Until I could get a colorist. This is what I did. Now, this book that I'm giving away, this is the first one that's in color because I found a colorist. Number one, it is expensive to have other people do your work for you. So... There's something else to think about. I was, when I say, are you doing it yourself? Do your friend, do you have friends that can color and so forth? And if you're not paying them, are they um, dedicated to do that or to stay with this? Now, as I said, this was my fir very first book. And my style has changed dramatically. So the more you draw, the better you become. And I always say that in my videos. The more you draw, the better you become. Now, I remember I have one guy that I worked with that he was going to put his book out. And to this day, I don't really, I think he might have put one book out since 2000. And that's because he was trying to make it perfect. In the beginning, you're not going to be perfect. And he would go back and he would erase and change that hand a little bit or this this eye was crooked and or you know this foot was not planted in the right position or the, the, the grass was not right and he would keep changing day after day month after month year after year and we kept saying man just put the book out put the book out your style will change in time you will get better in time but as i said about like handing out the candy if you one if you don't get a book out nobody will know you but if you get one out and it takes you two years to get another one out, then they will have lost interest in the book. So don't sweat the small stuff. Just get it out. That's probably the best information I have for you right now. Just put it out. Just do it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You'll get better in time. So this is, you see the difference between the art then and now. You see the difference between the clown then and now. So this is, I think this is a page from book, what is it? I think it might be book five. Yeah, I think this is book five. 
either book five or the beginning of book six. I got so many papers around this room, you would be shocked if I showed you this room right now. So as I say, now I have a colorist who's coloring this thing. Your style will change. You will get better the more you do. So this is one of the pages. This is another page. Your detail will come in time. Perspective. All you, got, you need to work on your perspective. That's another thing. Um, I have a video on perspective, but YouTube only allows you to have so many videos up at one time. And then they start deleting your first ones in order to get to keep your new ones up. Maybe you can get 200 videos up. It's just a guess. So if you have more than 200, you put 201, that first video is going to disappear. It's going to be floating around the web somewhere. Uh, if you know the title, you can type it in and it'll come up, but it will not be on your site. So that's one of the things that I have discovered. So I'm probably going to have to do a couple more or redo some of the very old videos that I've done. So this is a cover of um book four i believe i'll show you all the books later and as i said the mistakes that i made before like not having room for the title i was so ready to just draw this big old clown picture and that i didn't really leave enough room so i should have put it i should have covered the sword up and put it all the way across but i didn't know so now that i know make room for your your um Title, your cover, place for your title. Uh, a lot of times in the barcode, let's see on this. You're going to have to have a barcode somewhere on that. So you want to know where it's going to be at. So you don't put all this great detail in your cover way down here because it's going to get covered up. Of course, your name and who, who else does the book or who helped you with the book. You're going to have to have room for all of that. And this is the cover for number four. I think that was four, this is five, and then this is six, which is the one that I'm working on now. And I am ending up, going to end up um, doing the dialogue myself. And that's another thing about doing dialogue. So if you are doing this by yourself, you're going to have to put the words in there. Now, fonts, what type of fonts will you use to actually put the words in there. What is it? Comic Sans. Everybody's down on Comic Sans. Don't use Comic Sans. I don't know if somebody pissed somebody off, the Comic Sans creator pissed somebody off, but that's like the number one law that's going around the comic books. Do not use that. So you're going to have to pick fonts to make your book look good. And if you're doing it yourself, then you're going to have to be able to manipulate that stuff to, and I'm trying to look in here, to make, number one, some of your special effects. Some of your words uh, bigger, some of your words smaller, and that's going to take knowing how to type in Photoshop. Yeah. And then not just using the basic oval tool for every, every, um, every word. And I'm trying to find a good picture where they did not use that basic oval tool. Yeah, you, you make you flatten some out, you round some off, and you know, maybe some of these words you have to double them up together. And it's just another thing that you're gonna have to learn when doing Photoshop or doing your text like this. You put all these things together. And you're gonna have to always leave room for your words. That's another thing you have to think about. Something I really didn't think about when I was doing the first comic book. So this is the front cover to one of the books, leaving room for the words and other things. Another page. Now, as I said, I have a colorist now, so I have room or my inking style has changed to allow that person to be able to color, leaving room for your words. And this is one of the, the, the things that... Um, the circus employees, it's like, I call it spike pie. You know, the, the clowns always hit the person in the face with a pie. Well, these pies have little spikes inside of it. And these spikes are dipped in whether poison or some kind of chemical that might knock you out. And that's the reason for this thing. They call it a spike pie trick. Somebody hit in the face with a pie and then they just fall out. And you don't know why they fell out. More pages from the latest book. As I said, your style will change. The more you draw, the more your style will change. So another year from now, if I continue to draw, it'll be better than this. 
But if you're doing the comic, if you're doing a comic period, it's best that you know everything yourself. You need to know how to color. It's best to know how to color. It's best to know how to ink. It's best to know how to write everything. If you want to say, oh, I have a comic book company, but you only know how to draw because a lot of young kids will say that, oh, I have a comic book company. You don't have a book out yet. You just say you have a comic book company because it sounds cool when you go to school. And they say, well, where's your book? Oh, I don't have it yet. I'm still drawing. You don't know how to ink. You don't know how to write. You don't know how to do your, your word balloons. Then basically, you really don't have a comic book company. But if you're going to lead that company, you need to know how to do everything. All right. Now, I talked about advertising. Let's talk about publishing a little bit. Now, when you finish your book, you have to send it to a publisher. Now, a lot of young kids know about this, the, the computer stuff. I didn't know. I didn't know what a TIFF was or a JPEG or PDF was. And sending my books in to Kablam, which is the one I kind of stayed with because Kablam has another, well, I guess it's a sister site that allows you to put your books up and you can sell them. And I'll get into that later. But if you don't know how to upload it, then it'll come out wrong because I did one book that way and it came out so screwed up. It was just, it was a waste of my time. So something else you're going to have to know publishing and who are you going to publish with and then pricing. How much is your book going to cost? Now, the bad thing about when you do like the um, print on demand is what it's called. And it's like they'll, you send them the, the files, they'll put a book together and then they'll send you a couple books because a lot of times you have to order the books before they do anything. You have to order 10, 20, how many of the books just so they don't waste their time. But they always have the file. So if I see your book and I, I want it, I go to this site, they'll print one up for me, send it to me. They'll pay you. Now, the thing is the royalties. A lot of times these companies, when they print your book, they want to charge anywhere between 60 to 70%. So that means you only get 30%. So if the book only costs, say, like a dollar fifty to print. You charge five dollars. They are probably going to keep three seventy-five. I mean, my math sucks, but yeah, just three seventy-five. So you'll get whatever's left over. And you say to yourself, "Man, I did all the work. I did the story. I did the writing. And then they're only going to give me what a dollar something for every book that I sell." Uh, yeah, I know that that sucks, but you got to understand they put the book together. They are, are, are um, advertising the book in small ways. They are shipping it out, putting stamps on it, and getting it out. And basically, you're, after you give them the book, you're just sitting at home, just waiting. So they are doing the majority of the work. Yes, it does take a lot to put a book together, but they're doing the majority of the work. And so that's why you only get a little percentage of it. Now, will you get rich off of doing a comic book? It's possible. It is possible. I'm not going to say, oh, no, you know, shatter your dream. It's possible. If you have a character that is different from amongst the rest, this is why I did the clown. You have so many Wolverine wannabes, so many Superman wannabes, so many Batman wannabes. And this is what I tell people when they start a comic book. Don't come and say, oh, my character is unbeatable. He has 3,752 different powers, plasma beams. He can't be killed. He's immortal. He's this, he's that. Well, who can fight this guy? Every hero has to have a villain that is more powerful than them. And if you're just, as I call it, a fanboy who's walking around with your chest puffed out, like, oh, my character is so strong then eventually people are going to say, oh, he's just a this, or he's just a that, or he's just a copy of this. And nobody wants to see your character. Your character has to be one, I'm not going to say believable, he's going to have to be identifiable, shall we say, in some way, whether it be his power. I don't have superpowers, but so I can't identify with Wolverine, but I can't identify with um, him being a drunk. Not that I'm a drunk or drink, but I can. I know people who are drinkers and drunks. So I can identify with him in some way, but if he's just unreachable, then you, most times your character won't be chosen. Like if you advertise enough, you don't know of Hollywood because Hollywood today is all about superheroes because they ran out of stories. They ran out of cop stories and ex-military and secret agents and this and that. So now 
just about every other movie is about a mutant or somebody with superpowers and that's bringing in the money so this is the best time for you to possibly become a millionaire if somebody sees your story and they buy it but it has to be different your story has to be different your idea has to be different your character has to be different it cannot be the same thing because people in hollywood they know the ropes they'll say oh this is too close to batman oh he's a rich uh a uh, kid whose parents got killed, could have got killed in a train accident and the house blew up, but still, and he became a, a crime fighter. Oh, no, I can't make any money off that because the public will see Batman. So you have to come up with something different. So I'm sorry, if you have a Superman character, scratch it, start again, or find another way or rewrite the story, shall I say. You can have the same powers, but it needs to come out in a different way. He can't work at the grocery store and uh, have superpowers. And, um, you know, he came to the earth and he crashed in Russia or whatever. So it's got to be an original thing. It's got to be an original for people to actually sit and take note of. Unless your art is just so tight that it can cure blindness and cancer at the same time, a lot of people won't stay with your book. And then also, as I said, getting your book out, you must... Get your book out on a regular basis because if you skip a year or two, people will forget about you. I have seen some great artists, some of the top artists now who have, were doing books and they just gave up to do other things. And a lot of fans are just upset at these guys. Battle Chasers is one thing. I used to love that book. I used to love his art. I can't think of the guy's name. Was it not Cosada? I don't know, but he just stopped. He went into the digital world. So, I, yeah. Got it. Got to keep up with it. All right. So another page from it. And I'm looking at my little crib notes here. All right. Let's talk about cutoff points. When you start a story, and even though your story might not be completely written out, you have to figure out how many books will this take to complete the story. Don't say 100 books, 1,000 books. It's best that you have uh, a number to cut off. I would say six to 12 issues, cut it off. Because one, as I say, life gets in the way. You don't know what you're gonna do and you don't wanna plan out doing a hundred books and nobody's interested in your character. You wanna get a couple books out. You want to see what people think. And then if they like it, then you know, okay, I got a hit here. Now I have to keep going. And as I said, you have to, have to, have to keep coming every either two weeks or a month or bi-monthly, whatever, just like your electric bill, your water bill, that keeps coming and it's not going to stop. So you have to keep going because you know, oh, the fifth is time to pay the electric bill. Oh, the seventh, oh, the water bill will be here. So the first of the month, you know, oh, a new issue is going to be out. Oh, you know, the 15th of the month, a new issue is going to be out. And people get hooked on that knowing that when you mess up and you stop and people start fading away. They'll, they'll say, hey, where's the book? Where's the book? Where's the book? And then some other book will come along and they say, well, he hadn't put out anything. So let me move on to something else. And I know I said six issues in 19 years, but I've been doing other things. I'll get to that later. Another thing you can do is make you a little fanzine magazine. I don't fanzine, I guess it's fan-made magazine, I guess. I don't know what it's called. And basically, that is just an 8 by 10 piece of paper right here. And then you, you draw and you fold it in half like so. You draw on both sides and you fold it in half and you staple it and then you have your little cover. So you can open it up or you can, yeah, you, you, just, you just draw half and half. You draw your panels in both sides. And this was, this was I got this from a um, convention in 2006. I like the guy's style. It was, it was pretty good. His, his, his art, I liked his art. So as I say, it was pretty good. But yeah, make one of these. Do your lettering yourself, or if you're good enough to type it in, and you know, if you know a little bit about Photoshop, do it that way. And then just kind of hand them out. Hand them out to people. You can just have like your characters, you know, bio on each character. Just hand it out to, to your friends at school or at work or whatever, and see what kind of... Um, reaction or response you get out of it and if, if if you people say oh that sucks or that's it reminds me of batman or whatever then you know you go ahead and hit it down the wrong path and as i say you just staple it in the middle there's a staple 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 there's my finger 
Staple, staple. Yeah, you just stapled it right there in the middle. I think the other one came out better. And then you have your, your little book. You put it together. Like I say, you hand it out. You don't have to color it unless you just want to color, you know, the front. But basically, this you would use this to get people's reaction to your character, characters, or story. Good way to find out. And it's cheap. You don't need a lot of people to do that. You just do that one yourself. So, um... I've got my little crib notes here, which I'm, I'm going through, and this is another page. As I say, inking, you, you need to know perspective, doing your backgrounds, because a lot of times people will get into the manga, and the manga usually does not do a lot of background, but every now and then, or every other page, or a few pages, they will have some killer background to let you know where the characters are. So, as I say, I started this in 2000. And I'm on book issue six. I'm doing issue six in 19 years. Now, fortunately for me, I have done other things in that 19 years. Because my thing is, I always have stories and ideas running through my head constantly, constantly. I really don't even sleep at night because there's so many different stories and ideas running through my head. So I was the type, if I run into trouble doing something like, if I don't know what a JPEG is or, or PDF is or whatever it is, I'll jump to the next thing. So I have done a number of different books because one of the questions that somebody else asked me was, what can I do with my art skills? So I'm going to give you a short thing that you can do. And this was another um, title that I was working on, Next Soldier. It's a Christian book. This is one of my, my sketchbooks, and it has pictures in it I won't get into this this is the all girl action book this is at Amazon so if you, you have your positions that you want to 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 learn how to draw the first one which is the the um, action 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 post position that is also at Amazon and I'll get into publishing a bit I don't want to I don't want to forget about the whole publishing thing uh, it's my first children's book that I did now I drew it and I drew it and I drew it and I got to the point where it had to be right. This is my first children's book. So I ended up giving it after years. This, I started when my son was eight years old. He gave me the idea because his birthday was coming up. And he said, man, I wish my birthday was every day because he knew he was going to have a party. So that stayed with me. So I said, what would happen if a child did get a birthday every day? So I drew it. And then I said, oh, it's not right. And I redrew it. And I redrew it. And I redrew it. And I redrew it. And then finally, I said, man, this book. He was eight, and I think he was like 20 <laughs> when it came out, maybe 25 when, he, when I finished it. Because I gave it to somebody to finish it because I was just so tired of trying to make it perfect. So I got it out. I gave it to the guy. He, he drew it. He colored it. Um, yeah, so it came out pretty good. So, yeah, Amazon, too. Plus, I did another children's book. Um, another children's book. And this one is still in the works because... Advertising, as I say, when you try to upload stuff, if you don't understand how it is, it is the most frustrating thing in the world because what was it? Create space. Create space used to, to me, be the better app publisher, shall we say. But Create Space sold out to Kindle Publishing. And now Kindle Publishing, if you don't dot every I and every T, it'll come back to you. As wrong and you cannot get it uploaded so that's one reason why I ended up going back to Kablam because I was gonna have all my books published through here and be on Amazon and um, because Amazon is worldwide but basically if you have a book and somebody's selling it they'll pretty much sell it worldwide anywhere so don't let Amazon get you um, messed up because I had another guy who was saying, oh, well, I want my stuff to be on Amazon. If it's up somewhere for sale, then you can buy it, regardless if it's Amazon. It might not be shipped in two days, but it'll be on sale and you can buy it. So don't don't stress out trying to get to Amazon and uh, just, just get it up to where a publisher will advertise it. You advertise it if you have to, which is your job. You still need to advertise it and then just get it published. I'm looking at my monitor and why are these icons up on my monitor? You won't see it. So this was this was another book that I was working on. This was a children's book that I'm working on. And it kept coming back 
to me because something wasn't right and I was editing it and you know I kind of gave up on it. I didn't give up on it. I pushed it to the side and was working on some other things as I do because that's how my brain works. Now, what was I going to say about publishing? I think I might have said that already. Going back to what I was saying, life gets in the way. So if this is a dream of yours to do, do it. Make sure nothing else gets in the way. Don't go out and get remarried or start redating or have five or six kids because it will get in the way. I'm doing all this, plus I'm doing... <clears throat> I'm adding another title. I had a web comic. There's, there's several other things that I've done in those 19 years. I taught airbrush at the Ford plant down up here in Georgia. Uh, I've taught several places, several schools. What happened was, and I think this is relevant to what I'm saying is, once I started advertising my stuff, my name got out there somehow. And I, I, I East also did illustrations for a Christian magazine. Good money. That was good money. Working at home four hours a day, getting paid every week, $1,200. Every week a check came for $1,200 for working at home, sitting at my drawing table in my pajamas. That's the goal for artists, to be able to do your art, get paid for it. But somehow, by me advertising, my name got out there. Hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? So I started saying, oh, sure, I can do that, taking all these jobs. So I, it got out there. My name got well-rounded. Well, I got well-rounded in what I was doing, uh, drawing, writing, sculpting, teaching, teaching, doing airbrush, painting, the whole nine yards. So that was a question somebody asked me, what can you do with the skills that I have acquired learning how to draw? Comic books, children's books, um, uh, what is it called? What is it called? Uh, greeting cards. Oh, I'm so sorry you're sick. Oh, your pet died. If you go go look, go look at a greeting card, it's just a little bit of story. And you can put those kind of cards out yourself. Um, what else was I saying? Storyboarding. You can hire yourself out to do other people's art. If um, it's taking too long to do your art and you're running out of money, Tell somebody you'll do their covers for them. You'll uh, do like two or three pages for them. You'll ink for them. They've already done the work. So all you have to do is basically follow the lines. And if you're good enough, just add a little more shadow to it. There are a lot of things you can do with your artistic ability. Back in the day, it was the starving artist because all artists did was paint these big pictures and try to sell them on the street. And hopefully somebody would see them and um, pay them good money. But you know, you only make so much money per picture so you had to keep doing pictures like Bob Ross. Bob Ross died a millionaire if I'm not mistaken but he died a millionaire. I don't want to die a millionaire. I want to live a millionaire so I want to get as much stuff out as I can and one of the reasons why I started children's books was I saw a show Antique Roadshow. I said this in another video and an Antique Roadshow is um, a show where people find old stuff and they go to this place and they they appraise it. They tell you how much it is. You find an old walking stick. And it's like, oh, this was in the 17th century, carved out by such and such. This stick is worth, you know, $800. Oh, okay. I'll sell it. So some lady came and she had the original pages to a children's book. And the guy appraised each page at $2,000 per page. $2,000 per page. So I said, you know what? I can do children's books. I don't have to have the bulging muscles and all of the, the great, the crazy graphics, just, you know, children love children's books. So there are a lot of things you can do with that. So don't get stuck thinking, oh, I have to do comics only. Oh, I can only do comics. You can do a lot of things. I have a digital coloring book. I, I don't have that right now. I can't find where it's at, but uh, lots of things. Logos, designs you can do for, for other people. Get your name out there. You have this is the best time for advertising with social media. All that stuff is free. YouTube, Twitter, all of that stuff is free. Just keep kicking stuff out. Make yourself available to people. If you want to continue to do your comic book, then that's fine too. But just remember, life gets in the way. Find out how many issues you want to do. Do those issues. If you have another story, finish that one. Jump to another one. I was always one that do that would do so many at one time. I work I write, right now I'm working on two comic books at the same time. Somebody asked me to collaborate and I said that's fine I'll collaborate with you but it doesn't get in my way 
of me trying to do what I have to do. So, yeah, I'm busy. Plus, as I said, a full-time job now. Cut. So, I think that's going to be it. I have covered all my little crib notes here and if there is anything that someone wants to ask me please feel free to write me at my email and I'm just looking at the inside you're going to have to have your inside cover this is another thing you, you cover you're going to have to have your inside and usually your rear back cover publishing that's one thing I missed what are you going to have on the inside your front and back cover so publishing this is Kablam Kablam is what I use now because Kablam, as I said before, it is it has a, I don't know if it's a sister company or whatever, but it's partnered with, um, and I can't think of what it is, but Kablam will send your book to this other company or this other site, and the site will put your book up for advertising and sale. So that's one thing you're definitely going to need because with these last guys that I published with, it's more of they'll publish the book and then they'll send it to you and then you have to sell it. Or you have, yeah, you have to sell it yourself. And mainly that's for stuff like conventions. And I'm not, like, they don't have conventions every day. And I don't go to conventions every day. So I need my stuff to be advertised and sold. And I said I was going to do this. So these are the books that I have so far. This is my sketchbook. So let's get this out the way. And what is the latest one? Who is this? Comics, Comic Wellspring. This is the latest one. Uh, they do all of this stuff, and but as I say, you have to sell it yourself. You have to buy the book, advertise it, put it in an envelope, mail it to whoever, and that's not something that unless you if, unless you just sit at home all day, you can do or want to do. So, book one, two, three, four, and five. So these are the the, the books, the Samurai Clown books. Now. I will leave the address up to where you can find these books if you are interested in the story. It's a good story. It's, it's still an ongoing story. Um, but I'll leave the address, the link, to where you can go buy the books. And I really, I think it's three dollars. I'm not sure. I got three dollars here and three dollars there. I don't. I, I guess it's still three dollars. I haven't changed it. So, and if you go to Amazon, you will find. I believe this is up on Kablam. These two books are up on Kablam as well. So, yeah, 19 years I have done a lot. I haven't sat around doing any, you know, just sitting around smoking cigarettes all day. So, my books are on Amazon, which if you go, if you go to Amazon.com and you type my name in, Brian Proctor, right here, then it'll say Brian Proctor Books. You just click on that, and then it'll show you the books that I've done that's on Amazon. If you scroll down more, You'll see some of the books that I did for a couple other people help them. I think I did a couple covers and one I did like the interior of the book or the pictures of the book. So, yes, there is money to be made with your artistic skill. Just don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't do one book and think, oh, this is the book. This is the book. It's going to make me a million dollars. It could if you advertise right and you get it out there and you keep kicking it out. It could. But then again. It might not. So this is why I try to do as much as I can. And if you can draw a person, you can draw an animal. If you can draw an animal, you can draw a building. If you can draw a building, you can draw a car. So you can be a designer. You can be clothes designers. You do that anyway if you're drawing books. You're designing clothes. You're designing covers. You're designing, um, you're doing interior uh design you do an exterior design if you draw a building the, f the front of a building if you draw the interior inside of somebody's office so think about that it takes a lot and that's why i like comic books that's why i got in the comics because you're doing everything you're drawing everything so you can take that one little thing out and put it into something else if i'm drawing anatomy i learn how to draw anatomy so okay why not teach people how to draw anatomy I can still draw comic books. This is making me money. This is making me money. You know, children's book, Simple Anatomy, that's making me money. So you have all these royalties coming in every month, every couple couple times a month. 
So there's good money to be made. But for you who are doing the comics, just remember, get your characters, get your story. How long is your story going to be? How many issues is it going to take? Are you doing it by yourself? Do you have money to pay people to color, to, to write, to do that? If not, learn those skills for yourself. Do it. Don't stress over, is the leg right? Is the balance right? Don't stress over any of that stuff. Get the book out. If the story is good, your characters are original, people will continue to come back for more, making you more popular. They'll show your book to somebody else. They might show your book to somebody else. You don't know whose hands your book will end up in, and you might get an email or a phone call saying, hey, my name is such and such. I work for Hollywood Studios or whatever. I love your story. You don't know. Just put it out. Get it out. Keep kicking it out. So, enough of my rambling. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you learned something. If it was just one thing, you learned it. So that's going to be it for this video. Not video, this lesson. These are not videos. These are lessons. And I guess I will see you guys in the next lesson. Keep drawing. Never stop art. Join me on Unfinished Comics where I critique people's work. If you want your work critiqued, I'll put it online. I'll do a video of it showing you uh, your rough spots and how to, to adjust that so that people who are having the same problems can see and say, oh, that's how you do that. So yes, join me there. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video lesson. All right, I'm out. Keep drawing. All right, and looking back on everything, I'm going to go over quickly the things that I may have missed. So in the beginning, my uh, logo for the clown is dramatically changed from book one to book two, where I turned it sideways. I made it a little bigger. Then I opened it up to make it a little brighter. And finally, I came out with this, changing the T to the scales because it is the trials of the samurai clown. So I changed that to make it my own. So also your page count. I think it, it has to be even number. They don't, you can't, you have to print an even number. So if your story just happens to run out or run on an uneven number, it's good to do something like, where is it? Where is it? Maybe a pinup at the end of one of your characters or uh, maybe the book cover for the next book. Just add a little something in there. You can do the pinup and then tell the little bio of the character. Also good to have a little folder. Just get you a little folder and then that folder have any um, material that you might need for the book like some images of um, something and I took that and I got the armor from that. Ideas for, for um, whatever clothes or weapons or whatever and you keep that in the folder and most importantly is your font that you finally use. Write that down and put it in your folder. Whatever font you use, whatever size you use on the font, uh, if you added a, a drop shadow, all of those stuff so that you won't have to months later if you stop and you come back you won't have to try to figure out what font did I use and and how big was it and so forth and so on even if it's in your computer just leave an open um, thing I'm not even gonna try to put the words there to where you can just click on it and you already have all the information there so I think the average length of pages in a comic book is about 12 pages so that's about 24 pages. Let's look at this professional one. If you count the pages, one page, two pages equal one. So you have to take that in, in account. And these guys are throwing a lot of um, advertisements in there to fill out the book. And if you just, if your book is really thin, then as I said, just draw some pinups or just some, um, some bios of your characters or just like um, if he's in a bat cave, do a little picture of his bat cave that where he's in just to actually actually give you some more pages. Now, well, another question the guy asked me was, uh, what materials do I use? And I did that on another video, but you may never see that other video, so let me quickly show you what I use. All right, real quickly, these are the supplies that I use. It's best to get you a set of uh, the marker pens. Now, I use the Fabric-Castell and I use the Micron. It depends on what's cheaper at the time 
or what um, what I'm in need of. So basically, it's best to get a set, and that way you have all your different tips and a brush so that you can do your darker areas. And I'll use a red pencil, a regular pencil, and a blue pencil. Where's my blue pencil? This one. It's just blue pencil. It's just three different colors. It's like you have the blue lines here when you uh, print it. I don't even think you can see that. It doesn't even look blue in the monitor anymore. But when you print it, it won't, it won't show. So you can make a lot of mistakes and then you print it out. Now, this is important. The paper that I use, this paper is the Stratmore Bristol Smooth Line. I don't use this paper. I don't use that paper. You get like, how many sheets in this thing? 24 sheets. 24 sheets, and I think this is like $25 or, or maybe $30 now. I don't use these. I bought this for a giveaway. I just didn't do it yet. This is what I use. This is basically the same thing. Look, look let's, let's take a look at this. See how many sheets you get? 25 sheets right here. This thing here, you get, take a look at this, 250 sheets. Can, can we put this side by side? 250 sheets. Okay, it's the same paper. It just doesn't have all these lines around and do you really need these lines no you don't all you need is a border line right here one inch from a half inch if I'm not mistaken you take this paper this is plain paper this is plain white paper same paper as this let me show you same same paper as this it just doesn't have the blue line so you just you just take a pencil or something and a ruler and you make your, your mark your one inch by whatever inch, and there's your border, and you know not to come out of the border. So, focus camera, focus. I don't have it on lock, maybe it'll lock now. Yeah, so, it doesn't like just white spaces, it just freaks out. So yeah, just don't come out your border. You don't need this, this is, I think this was, it went up now because I was buying it like crazy, and they must have said, oh, we got somebody hooked on it. I think it's like $40 now. But 250 sheets, when will you ever go through 250 sheets? This is the second one I bought since 1999. No, somewhere around 2000 or something because I was buying this and the sheets were just running out so quick. So I ran into this and I bought this and it's been like, I'm talking about four years or so before I had to buy any more. So yeah, those are the materials. Save you some money. Go and spend that $40 for this paper. It's still Bristol paper, just as thick as this and then save you some money so that's going to be it and if you stay with this video this long which should be probably about an hour and some you should have learned something if nothing else you should have learned something so let me cut it right here without any more and then see you guys later and oh i almost forgot about the books write me at my email address and just say i want one of your comic books and then I will choose 10 people and then I will send them out right away, almost, almost. So yeah, that's it. So yeah. All right, creators, that is how it's done. And if any of you guys want to pick my brain a little bit more, you guys feel free to contact me anytime at my email address, which is right here. And I will shoot you back an email. So like I say, pick my brain, whatever information you might want. I'll be help, helpful. I'll be glad to help you guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Pass on the knowledge. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Go out and grab somebody by the throat and make them subscribe if they haven't. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right. Peace out. Let's go do some drawing. Do some drawing. Let's go do some drawing.